When Jesus said, it is finished, he was declaring the awful price of sin paid in full for all time, for all who believe. Those who run life's race dogged by guilt can know forgiveness and pardon because Jesus made what is truly the supreme sacrifice. Nothing we could ever do can add anything to the value of the payment he has made. Stay with us. From Chicago's Moody Church, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Our current series is Highlights from Hebrews, and today we turn again to Hebrews chapter 10. In this, the fourth message in his series, Dr. Lutzer is explaining why the sacrifice of Christ is totally sufficient to redeem lost mankind. Jesus Christ, the Bible says that when he finished it, he sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. I don't want to give the impression that he's not doing anything in heaven today. He's got a full 24-hour agenda of representing us to the Father, of interceding for us. He's ruling the world, as a matter of fact, through his agents, some of whom are blowing it royally, but nevertheless, he is ruling the world. But so far as his sacrifice is concerned, he never, ever has to go through that again. He never has to add to it. And the fact that he is seated, the author of Hebrews wants us to understand that his work is done. It is finished. There is a priest who actually did the job. He did the job. That's the second contrast between those priests who stood and the high priest in heaven who sits because it's finished. Third contrast is the contrast between partial removal of sin and there was a removal of sin. God did it on credit. He foresaw the coming of Jesus Christ and said, I will temporarily set this sin aside so that we can have fellowship because it's going to be paid for later. But the Old Testament worshiper always knew that it was partial. He always knew that, that somehow there was this low-level sense of guilt that it was never finished because it was never finally and totally taken away. And so what you have is the contrast here in the passage between partial removal and actually being perfected. Notice it says in verse 14, For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. He has perfected them. Old Testament, you weren't perfect and you knew it. And God seemed to keep reminding you of the fact that you weren't. New Testament, Jesus Christ takes those who are his and he gives them his perfections. Are we perfect in experience? Oh, God knows how far short we fall. We might even be surprised if we had a time here today when we could look into people's hearts and know even what they did this past week that was sinful and destructive and stained their consciences. We're not perfect. But legally, in God's sight, he has declared us to be as perfect as Christ. He is the one who has spoken the word of perfection. Twenty-four hours a day, God demands perfection from me if I'm going to be his child in fellowship with him. Twenty-four hours a day, Jesus Christ supplies what God demands. Twenty-four hours a day. And then there are days when I don't feel very spiritual. Some of you maybe struggle with migraine headaches like my wife does, or you're going through some time of illness, or everything goes wrong. You know, all those signs that talk about how wrong a day can go. And some days really do that pretty well. And so you don't feel spiritual. You're a born-again believer, but you're not filled with the Spirit. At that very moment, Jesus Christ is your perfection in heaven. And the righteousness which he has is the righteousness which God has, and it is being continually credited to your account. And God says, draw near because your sin, legally, the barrier has been removed. The way has been made open. Come close. 
come close. And that's the third contrast. Partial taking away sin versus perfection. Being made perfect. There's a fourth contrast in the passage. And that is the temporal being, uh, having, offering those sacrifices and, and temporarily receiving some kind of alleviation from your sin versus forever. Now let's look at the text. Verse 12, but he having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time. I like the King James here, forever. He sat down at the right hand of God because forever is really the meaning and the thought Verse 14, for by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. The word sanctified, hagios, those who have been made holy in him. He has perfected them for all time. Does your heart warm up to this truth and uh, do you ever rejoice in it? This is overwhelming because just think about this for a moment. If when I accepted Jesus Christ at the age of 14, as I did, at least I came to assurance at that time, God took care of only the sins that I had committed up until that time, I'd never be sure about tomorrow. I'd never be sure about next week or next year or the next decade because God knows that I will be committing other sins where am I with my relationship with God? Always off base, always wondering where I stand. No firm foundation. Why? Because my sin would only be taken care of in the past and the future is scary indeed because I might mess up. And sometimes I do. Now I want you to notice what the text says. He has perfected them for all time, forever, forever. I want you to know today that if you are a born-again believer, not just somebody who uh, has signed a card or prayed a prayer, because there are plenty of people who do that who are not born of the Spirit. But I mean if you have received Christ, you're indwelt with the Spirit, you're regenerated.